Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful Empowered Harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in a little bit more in depth and to go into a discussion on one of the traits of the narcissist, particularly that of gaslighting. When the seeds of negativity are planted within to sort of cause you to question and doubt yourself and really sort of not really look at your own decision making, your own internal compass with certainty, not knowing that you have sort of a sense of center where you can make and process judgment or decisions in a factual or objective and common sense manner, particularly ones that are in the direction of your own best interests. When we talk about a narcissist, we're talking about a someone with a pathological sense of self-importance, basically someone who feels that they are better than, superior than others, really to the point of loving, falling in love with themselves and falling in love with their needs and falling in love with their wants to the exclusion of consideration and sensitivity, compassion and empathy with others. So the way that they treat others will oftentimes include a manipulative tactic called gaslighting, where they sort of throw the seeds of discontent within yourself, particularly that they are discontented with you, that they disapprove of you, that they then are not supportive, yet they are in a relationship. These seeds of discontent or malcontent really oftentimes are sent out or projected as disapproval or rejection. And not just like, that's a bad idea, you know, I don't approve of that, but more like, I don't, I don't approve of you as a person. I reject you as a person, that there's something fundamentally wrong about your decision-making, your judgment, or your mental process that makes you unacceptable. And even what people might feel as intolerable. So there's sort of this dichotomy or split between really who you are and then what the narcissist is reflecting back to you. And the narcissist is then reflecting back to you a mirror reflection of a flawed sense of self, which causes you to sort of disown your I am, disown your greatness and disown your positivity. Meaning if you don't have a sense of positivity and excitement and reward and happiness, you're going to extinguish those behaviors or those relationships but it becomes really down to the ideology and the philosophy that the narcissist, when they're gaslighting, they're causing you to reflect that you should reject your own self unto yourself. Um, that you are you know, not just a reject, but you, that you should also reject yourself. In other words, really are leading you onto a path of self-annihilation and really um, self really at the, at, the, at the epitome or at the rock bottom is self self-loathing and self-sabotage. So self-loathing can really start to become a real problem when people have really processed through a narcissist relationship and sort of churned it and at the fight and battle when they're sort of trying to hold their ground after the devalue and sort of entering the discard state, you know, where they're, you know, not remembering the positive times. They're not remembering the good times. They're not identifying with the good times or the narcissist is no longer identifying with quote unquote what is felt in the community or known as love bombing, where all of a sudden, you know, they're opening doors to relationships with you. They're accommodating, they're endearing, they're, you know, might have sort of this sort of, uh, you know, grandiose, like welcome to relationship with me. You know, it might feel like this, all of a sudden you're a special or unique person that you're entitled to be in with their with their, with them or with their group or their association or, you know, sort of being welcomed in and embraced in. And it feels like they're welcoming the real authentic you, that they're loving what, what it all is that you're packing of goodness within that they are, you know, respecting and admiring of you and inclusive of you. And there's a feeling of belonging, you know, inviting in and then belonging and then connection. But yet with a narcissist, it's not really one of connection and identifying with the authentic self. They're identifying with their needs for you. They're not identifying with you. So it's like, I need you 
for either as an outlet or you know because you make me look good because I need your smarts because I need your good looks because I need your intelligence you know they're just sort of in it for the short term they're in it for the satisfaction of their needs and not that they're you know welcoming welcoming you and then with your needs sort of as a package combo deal they're just sort of identifying with you and how you satisfy their needs sort of on a very superficial basis and the gaslighting and it, it's usually because and the it, it's what, what sets these relationships apart is these individuals have a need to control and overpower others which then results in a feeling of ultimately of overwhelm particularly when you feel that you've sort of lost direction or lost connection with your auth with who you are so there becomes sort of a, an enmeshing of boundaries where people then usually jump full you know full in full on with a relationship with this individual and that it feigns or mimics um you know compassion empathy and commitment and you know there can also during the love bombing it can be just sort of this instant relationship where all of a sudden you know you're in you know you're in this hot and heavy romantic relationship very close very quickly or feeling like you know and then usually there's a setting up of a pattern and the narcissist sort of they know that you know that they're that they're relating to you through a shell so it's through a sort of falseness on their end and really so through the mirror neurons then it sort of brings out a pressure or a need to conform or you know be on that same wavelength or that social same emotional body with them that un unfortunately involves deception and then gaslighting so gaslighting is when they're they're sort of making you um value their opinion and then you know you're then you know sort of valuing their their viewpoint you're embracing them you're loving them you know you're all in and accepting of them and then their viewpoints with a narcissist there's it's very subtle command that you know you serve me that you um that you are just sort of conforming to me and that i'm sort of calling the shots you know even though this sort of goes back and forth between a variety of relationships and sometimes it's clear cut sometimes it's not so clear cut sometimes you know it's more balanced sometimes it's sort of imbalanced and some people like it imbalanced where you do all the grocery shopping you know you bring in all the bills and then i keep the house so sometimes people you know relationships like this can work this way and perhaps a lot of people i think in the beginning of a relationship with someone who is narcissistic it begins that way it begins you know the feeling that you know you have your strengths and then i'll just sort of toddle along or just sort of docile follow not on your on your uh on your coattails but sort of in your tracks like you know it's it's a and i think for a lot of people especially who are empathy driven or have an abundance of empathy that seem to be attracted to these individuals um you know that they then feel it's a sign of respect to sort of honor them it's it's a sign of respect to be supportive it's and then you know and not that they're just meant to only be in a support role of them that they should also eventually you know be a leader help to sort of have input collaboration and then manage the relationship together that it's not managed just by the narcissist but a narcissist who has a pathological need to control and have power they end up being the ones who are quote unquote manager over the relationship and then other people begin to feel like an administrative you know it, you know administrative assistant to them an underling to them um and a support to them in other words it's not going both ways it only goes up to them and it doesn't come then down to you versus you know back and forth um and having you know a sort of e equal equanimity in support going both ways you know this is important for a functional relationship but when you're talking about gaslighting you know you're talking about people who are planting the seeds that you know you don't have what it takes you'll never make it therefore i won't invest in you i won't give the time of day to you i will i will no longer you know so it's this withdrawing of affection withdrawing of attention withdrawing of approval which sort of the relationship in the beginning sort of was based on in the beginning you felt in the love bombing that you were welcoming of the real me and that you know that you would want the real me and that's what i can only be is real to myself i can't 
you know, live a lie, you know, even though the thrill of the relationship with a, with a narcissist has that sort of tinge because of their grandiosity has this tinge or ethereal sort of, um, fantasy, like, you know, like, wow, this is, you know, the relationship of my dreams. Like, this is so good. This is, you know, I can't believe this special treatment from this individual. Like, I'm really getting it good now. This is what I really need and want. And then, so you seem to, you know, let yourself go into the relationship. And it, once again, it feels like in the name of love. And then the narcissist is just sort of, you know, very charming and oftentimes can be bigger than life. Once again, there's an entitlement issue going and a grandiosity, which people don't know. They just think this person is the real deal. Um, this is how they are. They're so exciting. You know, they're thrilling. And I am therefore thrilled and excited in the relationship. <clears throat> But the problem then is that the seeds of negativity um, begin to be planted, thrown uh, <clears throat> largely through projection. Um, and, you know, it's just sort of, you know, giving you looks that sort of cause you to catapult into fear and self-doubt. Uh, fear, namely, can be an overriding then feeling or emotion as a result of gaslighting because you feel that you're losing in the relationship. You're losing ground. You're no longer connected to this person who you once thought that you were connected to. You know, how dare you think you were connected to me? This is not what, you know, is real. And just sort of, it just, the relationship takes on this whole different tone, feeling, and vibe, which is then controlled and managed by the narcissist, causing you to feel sort of disowned and then gaslighted. Um, and, you know, especially that of being skeptical of you, judging you, you know, how could you do this? How could you, you are, you know, just sort of this, you know, you are, you know, unbelievable and just sort of looking at you with disbelief. And yet they, you know, are just sort of reflecting this back when it's just kind of like you are, you know, it's no longer just like, I can't believe in you. It's like, you are unbelievable and you know, um, you know, you are, you don't have, um, the right to this sort of connection with me to think that I should be expected to drop this, to listen to you, or that, you know, we should talk about this in the relationship. Um, um, you know, or, or feeling that you are then, you know, um, exhibiting or expressing yourself in the relationship the way that they do, i.e. trying to make some shots, not make some shots, but call some shots, call some ideas, you know, kind of step up in the relationship, give your input, and then it's met with like, you're smothering me, um, you know, um, is usually a common one. You know, I need room. Um, this is too much. Um, and, you know, it's, you know, do, you know, do you just want the wrong thing and sort of belittle you for wanting the real thing? And so their version of the real thing is then evaluated as you are smothering, needy, or that you shouldn't need me for this. Um, and so interdependence in the relationship is not plausible or possible where, you know, when we're talking about codependence, you're becoming too dependent on taking care of the other person versus sort of being able to have responsibility for yourself, you know, and, and having a sense of I am that is strong enough when you enter in the relationship that these two can go hand in hand. But the narcissist then soars, you know, tends to lead others into an identity corruption or an identity corrosion a, you know, what I feel is a corrosion of the I am within that individual. So they no longer have a foundation. They're like back to nothingness that they feel that they don't have any recourse to, you know, they're then doubt, they're living in a gas lighted state. They're, they're feeling negative. They're feeling a sense of rejection. They're still feeling a sense of um, emotional and relationship poverty, um, that they don't know have direction without this person because this person become so integral to giving them direction in their life ultimately. When you're with them long enough, the, you know, when, when people fall in love or have this sort of traumatic bond, you know, someone then jockeys for, I, I kind of think of it as like an emotional jockeying um, where, you know, you don't realize it, but you know, they're trying to win the race and you didn't know that you were in a race. And it's kind of like, well, I'm, they, in, in my viewpoint, the narcissist will enter into this when it's like, they want to be the one to have power and control and then say, 
I'm going to ditch the relationship, but you, before you have a chance to discuss it or call the shots or make the decision. Um, and so this can be very hurtful, very bewildering. And like, we missed some steps here. We missed some stages in the relationship. And then you feel that manipulated. You're, it's not just a heartbreak. It's not that we just didn't get along, but there were these seeds of skepti skepticism in the very foundation of who you are, your I am. And that's reflected back by the narcissist that, you know, you're not worthy of my time. You're not worthy of communication. You're not worthy of me, you know, you know, um, connecting with you during this time, you know, because I, I'm too busy or, you know, all these other people, this is, you know, important to me. And then you get sort of lost in the shuffle, lost in the scuffle, and then it can be very damaging. Um, and then it becomes very difficult to own your I am apart from this individual because part of the identity gets absorbed by the narcissist. In other words, in order for the relationship with a narcissist to proceed, you have to sort of identify with their needs. You become, even whether it's, um, you know, becomes part of your awareness or your conscious awareness, but you really do become through time, whether once again, you observe it or not, you begin to cater to their needs. You begin to, you know, become, you know, service oriented to them, meaning you are supply and support. And a lot of people enjoy being support, um, to them. They enjoy, you know, um, you know, uh, being there to help them take their career or their life or the, you know, their passion or their intimacy to the next level. So there's a lot of positivity to this, but the, the gaslighting will can be sort of, you know, created through a process of being pro misprogrammed by the narcissist. They will, you know, lead you to believe, string you along that you are important, that you are significant to them and that you are their number one. But what you find then that you are, you know, number three and four, purely to them, their health, their career, their friends, their own, you know, need for commitment. I mean, you end up losing, you know, you know, being number one, sort of going down to feeling like number 10 or, you know, not even on uh, whatsoever. You know, it just, it does, it is not, not make sense. It does not balance, balance out. It does not compute. This is known as gaslighting when, you know, the kind of throwback to you, you know, what made you think, you know, we were in love, you know, what made you think, um, that we were going to move in, you know, um, how could you assume this? You know, we never really alluded to that. You know, this was, I thought it was apparent to you and, you know, all these, you know, they will sort of make these and reflect these wrong ideologies back to you that you, you know, are off and that you, you know, that it's, it's not a good fit. And it should be obvious to you that you were just sort of this, that, and the other thing when it was really never able to be discussed. And so people really want to hang on for closure when they've gone through the gaslighting. However, this is really a, an important time maybe that you look at taking a step back and sort of realizing that you, that their, their need to shine had overpowered the shine of the relationship, meaning that it was, it was not a we <clears throat> when you thought there was a we. It's a them, it's a they, it's, you're just superfluous. You're just, you know, extra, you're just, um, there, you know, to buffer them. Um, and you're not there for a relationship. So, you know, a narcissist will feel that, you know, you just help to buffer me, you know, and without consideration, the fact that you might've sacrificed a lot of time, energy, money, you might've put them number one on your calendar and you thought it was the same. Um, so it can be very difficult to, um, exit out of that, that gaslighting state where it just does not make sense. Largely you feel empty or lost, you know, without direction because you are using part of the relationship as your North star or, you know, your emotional compass. In other words, the decisions you make, the plans that you make, how you are, are planning for your finances or to take a trip or things of that nature. And then you find that you've then, you know, people then are very deflated emotionally when they're, when they're coming through the gaslighting they're they feel lost for direction because it's very difficult to think in that confused state. And then people then to have sort of a break of a spectrum, meaning either they want to be all in or all out. And then they have this sort of, um, you know, after being um, brainwashed, just sort of this feeling that it's like that through a blanket, through all relationships, like, you know, um, I want to be all out of relationships. I no longer trust myself. I no longer trust 
people. I no longer trust women. I no longer trust men. I no longer trust corporations. I no longer trust, you know, wh wherever the relationship might have been encountered. You know, it's a feeling of disbelief and then lack of trust, um, which it can be very difficult to get grounded from. So, you know, um, it's, it is a form of um, abuse, meaning that they're taking advantage and they are hurting you. It's, it's not in your best interest to be mistreated. It's not in your best, um, <clears throat> it's not in um, your, it's not giving you advantageous um, planning. Um, it's not giving you the ability to dream and to plan the way that you would try to rely on them. So it can be very, it can lead to a, a feeling of not being able to rely on them when it's sort of flipped that you are, you are unreliable to yourself, which is the erroneous thinking. That's a flawed thinking as a result of being um, gaslighted in a relationship. And we can definitely go into more in depth if you like this. It's your buddy, Peace and Harmony. I hope these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. And definitely join the new Peace and Harmony memberships for more tools and discussion on some real specifics that can help to take your understanding, your clarity, and then your happiness to the next level. Hope to see you there. Have a beautiful day.